One question, Alexandra, will you do a little introduction on accessibility in the, so all the interpretation functions and so on? Uh, yes, I can do it. Do you want me to do it now or we will uh, wait? We can wait. Uh, people are still joining, but if you can do it, yeah, when I, I do like a very brief intro and then you don't mind. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Greetings, everyone. This is Ricardo speaking. Just checking that you can hear me. Um, I will um, pass the the floor briefly. Um, okay, and and yes, Alexandra, I'm just <laughs> looking at the chat. If you could please record in English and then a. Uh, colleague in French, maybe, and in Spanish, if there's sufficient, but if not, it is fine. English and French, let's... Sorry again, so this is Ricardo, yeah. and um, I work from the UN Refugee Agency. We are uh, very glad to, to have you here in this annual consultation. We received over 80... Yeah. Uh, registration requests, which is very, very nice. Um, but we still are waiting for more people to join. Um, so in the meantime, I would like to pass the floor to our colleague Alexandra, who will explain some of the accessibility features that we have, including interpretation. Thank you. Over to you, Alexandra. Thank you, Ricardo. Uh, dear all, my name is Alexandra. I'm going to briefly explain some of the technical features of today's call. This webinar is being recorded. There is international sign interpretation, captioning in English and language interpretation in uh, English, French, Spanish, and Arabic. A CC button on the bottom of your screen in the meeting controls toolbar will enable to close captions. If you need captions in the external window, the link is in the chat box. The interpretation button on the bottom of your screen, presented as a globe, will allow you to access specific language channel. Please choose your channel that you will follow throughout the meeting. The participants do not have an option of opening the microphone and video. Should you have a question, kindly leave them in Q&A section. Our team is monitoring the chat box and will try and respond to questions during the event where possible. Should you have any accessibility issues, please send a private message to the host account or email webinars at Ida middle dash secretariat dot org we request all speakers to kindly keep to times and keep their cameras if not speaking we are asking you that you speak slow enough for the interpreters and captioners to follow thank you all and have a good meeting thank you alexandra this is Ricardo speaking again. We have uh, today our annual consultation with persons with disabilities, organizations of persons with disabilities, refugees with disabilities, and the stateless persons with disabilities as well. We have run uh, five, if I'm not wrong, or 
four previous webinars um, on engaging with human rights mechanisms. So uh, colleagues uh, from UNHCR and from the International Disability Alliance explained how we could leverage, we could use human rights mechanisms such as the Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, other human uh, rights treaty bodies to leverage and information, even advance, share bilateral uh, and confidential submissions to advance the rights of persons with disabilities uh, living in forced displacement in situations of statelessness. We had as well a webinar on the Global Refugee Forum. So this is a, a global event where uh, UNHCR, member states, the civil society, academia, including as well civil society, NGOs, organizations of persons with disabilities, refugee-led organizations bring together an effort to uh, promote the Global Compact on Refugees, which offers solutions, protection for persons with dis sorry, for refugees, uh, um, and including among them, them uh, persons with disabilities. Um, and bringing opportunities, how we could strengthen disability inclusion in the Global Refugee Forum, how organizations could share commitments or pledges um, to improve their uh, engagement into, into refugee response, including as well taking the opportunity to leverage donor support, um, governmental engagement, if it's not financial, that these resources, commitments, policy changes, etc. And this was the second webinar. There was a third webinar on understanding the mandate of the UN Refugee Agency and discussing issues that are still pending on how to better articulate the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and the Refugee Convention, how procedures for asylum could be more accessible, how disability could be better understood within the refugee grounds, so the reasons why a person may, may uh, access refugee status, and as well issues related to social protection, access for refugees with disabilities to national services addressed for other citizens with disabilities. The fourth webinar, which was the, the last one last week, focused uh, on gender-based violence and how it intersects with disability, placing women and girls at a heightened risk of gender-based violence. And we discussed uh, those both most common risks and barriers faced by women and girls with disabilities to access services, and then some of the promising practices, including, for example, conducting accessibility assessments within safety audits, which is a very common process in GVB programming. But acknowledging as well gaps in programming that may need to, to require further attention in the, in the coming year. These are only some of the areas in which we could uh, add some intentional uh, attention, resources, collaboration in the coming year. But uh, we circulated with this registration, there was a little option to share three priorities for the coming year. And this is what we want to discuss today. I would like to open the, the space for you all. We have the Q&A. If you want to use the microphone, you can as well um, raise your hand 
and we will ensure that you can uh, use your microphone. You can write as well your contributions. We have done a little analysis of the uh, information that you have shared. And I will share it at a certain moment, but I would like first to open the floor and then give you an, an opportunity um, to influence the discussion. We've been speaking ourselves a lot uh, through panelists, through partners, etc. And now we would like to everyone uh, have the opportunity to share as well their requests. If you would like to add, to complement, to explain, even if you contributed maybe online in, in the little um, questionnaire we had, if you would like to explain why you selected those points, you can go ahead now. So I will give one or two minutes of silence if you want to think and raise your hand or start uh, typing in the, in the chat or in the Q&A section. Thank you. Yes, and I start seeing hand raise. So, uh, Michael uh, Dotto, I will allow you now to unmute your microphone if you want to check. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah, my name is Michael from DR Congo. Um, there's something that uh, I need to mention here about this uh, misrepre misrepresentation of names. It has come a problem when a refugee, uh, for some reason, can present his case for a different name. Okay, now when, because of insecurity, has decided to present a case for a different name. Now here comes somebody else, or maybe he has presented his original name. Now here comes somebody who can make claim on his behalf coming to UNSCR, uh, stating that this person, I know him or I know her, just because of destroying his rep reputation. Sometimes someone can, came, can come to claim that uh, this is my husband, uh, this is so and so, is my brother, I know him, he has left me, whatever, whatever. Without, you and Sierra, without knowing that uh, that person who is claiming that maybe is a, is his enemy also, is, is doing that, just to destroy his reputation so that this, this person can be blocked or his case can be make on pending, UNSCR without considering another, you know, listening to, to, to the, the, you know, no, the owner of the case is going to put that case on pending. This is why I'm, I'm, I'm surprising for this, this uh, you know, this local local law which they've amended is making refugees in danger. That's what I'm, I need to say. That's why most of cases are on pending. They are not on pending because they are, they are caused by the enemy of those people. And UNSCR staffs are not considering the owner of the case. Instead of listening of the owner of the case, they are listening to people who are coming against the, the vulnerable person. That's what I'm, I need to Thank say. You. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. And if I, if I can rephrase uh, what has been shared, uh, mm. sometimes there are measures to... Uh, ensure ac access, equal access for people who cannot reach uh, in person. 
the yes. the asylum procedure and um, they may uh, allow a representative to to be there and this can be for example the case for many persons with disabilities the problem is a misuse uh, uh, like like a perverse use of that uh, accommodation measure mm -hmm. For people to take advantage and do a reputational risk for that person, yes. right? And mm -hmm. and so there should be the request. There should be that. There should be sorry for being so repetitive. Um, a process to uh, ensure that the identity and the reputation of the original claimant is respected, yes. right? Yes. Great. Okay, I, I've taken a note, and, and it's one of the interesting points where we see that accommodations or adjustments to ensure equal access can have a negative uh, use, and, and yes. where there should be an additional uh, safeguard measure to, to ensure that they are not inadequately used. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I would like to give the floor now to uh, Julius. Um, and in the meantime, I see that there's a other hand raised and a question in, in the chat. So, uh, Julius, uh, I will allow you to talk. That's it. And I think you can unmute now. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Ricardo. Uh, I will just add to what I've already uh, said during the, the questionnaire. I just want to see how it can be possible for refugee-led organization to partner with you in order to bring some uh, legitimate demand on the table with host government. I will take, for example, here in Sweden, we have a situation where uh, the government recognized that a person with disability has a problem getting into job market and then they decided to create like subsidized employment which uh, the pay taxes and uh, the, the pay any other union dues and everything like any other person but it becomes a disadvantage now to them when they go uh, to the migration agency to seek for a permanent resident permit then the migration agency will say we do not recognize any subsidized employment uh, wages from any subsidized employment as income so you cannot possibly get a permanent resident stay in sweden and if you don't get a permanent resident stay you cannot become a swedish citizen as of the law now so we have a situation where to me it's a discrimination based on uh, disability and country of origin because any uh, Swedish uh, citizen can get the same benefit, but he will not have the same impact in his or her life as a refugee. So we would really like to see if there are mechanisms or channels where we can engage on you on this kind of level of policies that can uh, be changed. Thank you. Thank you, Julius. And very, very interesting to have as well this example. Uh, again, I, I will reformulate just to ensure that I've captured well and I see Elham uh, coming in now. I will reformulate this and pass it uh, to you, Elham, with a little summary of what we've had. But the idea would be, well, uh, there are situations where measures to support uh, inclusion of refugees with and without disabilities are not adequate because of different um, interpretation of those in different ministry lines and for example subsidy uh, subsidized employment which is an uh, offered by central government as a way to promote inclusion may not be recognized by another agency in the same government as a formal employment and therefore not accepted uh, within the uh, requirements to uh, access a resident permit, right? And the support would be how we can partner and how to partner with UNHCR to influence governments. I think this would be a very interesting uh, ask, for example, for the upcoming uh, Global Refugee Forum. But I want to check first, uh, Julius, I, did I capture well your, your point? Exactly, you did well. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. So 
absolutely. We will find, uh, and I see that th there is a whole area. Again, I don't want to share the analysis that we've done, not to influence the conversation, but it is about social protection and how refugees with disabilities may find barriers to access um, social protection measures for persons with disabilities, but as well protection provisions for refugees at large. And the incompatibility of both is, a, is an issue. And we need to find policy solutions on that. Great, thank you. Elham, uh, so Elham is, she has been working with us all this time, but she had to, to join a bit late. So I, I wanted just to, to welcome you, Elham. And, and if you want to share as well some words, uh, say welcome. We started the discussion, but only with two, a couple of inputs uh, from uh, two colleagues. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ricardo, and hello, everybody. Uh, this is Elham Yusufian. I work with the International Disability Alliance, and I'm so uh, happy that we actually could create this environment uh, with your support, your engagement, uh, and prioritizing to be with us and sharing your views and your questions. Our collaboration with UNHCR is exactly in the middle of the way, like we started two years ago, and we think we're going to have at least another many, many years to come. But under this current framework, we think it would be another uh, two years for this level of collaboration, and hopefully we will go further. So um, with the Global Refugee Forum coming, we really wanted to hear from you. Uh, what do you think we should prioritize? And like the problem that Julius was sharing, I was just listening to is just at national level, extra barriers. So um, extra barriers that refugees with disabilities face at national levels um, that require advocacy. So um, of course, there are many things that we can do. First of all, these kind of meetings that we have right now should happen all the time. So problems like this, when you raise it to our attention, uh, my colleague is in the UNHCR HQ can, can uh, pass the message to the UNHCR country level team. At the same time, we do advocacy with the government. So uh, we can support your advocacy work, um, amplify your message to the government. In this case, for example, government of Sweden, but many other governments, that this is the barrier. That's what we call institutional barrier for people with disabilities. That we can highlight that barrier and do some uh, support your advocacy. That can be through a statement or, you know, we have connections with the missions, for example. We met the we work with the Swedish Development Agency. So there are many ways to amplify your advocacy message. We can also amplify your social media messages. So I assume that like when, if you are sharing this kind of request uh, in a social media uh, campaign or publishing a kind of story about it in the media, we can also help amplify that. We can also document and publish these kind of experiences and stories as an example of how uh, these kind of institutional barriers can uh, create additional barriers for persons with disabilities and their organizations. So um, as a priority for next year, I think what we can get from this is to pay more attention to uh, specific barriers to access to social protection or other services that uh, refugees uh, face, which is at, at national level. So I think it's very important that we find ways and uh, prioritize this in our work. Was there any other questions before I arrive, Ricardo, that you think I can help or I can? The, the, there was another request as well on, on some of the reasonable adjustment measures or reasonable accommodation measures and the and a per, and a per, per, how to say, a wrong use of those, right? So people, for example, taking the opportunity of the possibility of registering someone else uh, or uh, asking for for a, an asylum procedure on behalf of someone and using it in a negative way uh, oh. to, to influence negatively the reputation of that person. So that's uh, requiring some safeguarding yeah. to as well verify the identities, consent. This is a protection issue. Right? Exactly, so that is yeah. another interesting. We have another hand raise and is a uh, knocking uh, um, I will be, be 
call as well, just the possibility of sharing uh, inputs in Spanish, in French. There is uh, interpretation, so and, and in Arabic, sorry, uh, and sign language. So don't hesitate if you would like to share in your own language or another language of preference. Okay. So Armel, I have given you the possibility to unmute now if you would like to share. Hello, thank you for this opportunity. Welcome. I'm um, Paul Amel Nunying Amel Emerick from Cameroon. I'm the president of the coordinating unit of associations of persons with disability. So recently, we there was a research we did, we carried, uh, funded by the CBM through the social economic empowerment uh, of the SEED program. So this research was based on women who have experienced violence. I am in the zone where we have been in a political crisis for six, over six years now. So many of these women have been victims of gender-based violence and most of them could not speak due to the barriers that surrounds it. And they, some of them could only speak because we, the women with disability were involved in that research team they could open up to us because we were women with disability. So the truth is that we did this research and uh, we, some of them have gone through some psycho, uh, social counseling, but there is still this limitation of, it's, it's a good thing to, to bring them out of the trauma, but the issue of bringing them back to, to normal livelihood, we have limitations. And also we, the issue of resources to continue such an activity to see how we can empower them. We are limited in that area. So I don't know if I um, wish to ask if there is a means that we can have some support, both technically and financially to see how these women can come back to their normal lives. And most of them are women who have been displaced from their homes and they, they find themselves in town. Some of them are staying with people who are not relatives. Some of them, the they, they, they person they were depending on were locked up due to the crisis. So it is really challenging. Their lives are really challenging. They just live in dependence. And that is what makes some of them become victims. So I wish to know if there is an opportunity that we could be have some support technically, financially to see how we can bring these women back to their normal life. Thank you. Thank you, Armel. Yeah, Thanks so yeah. much. I would like maybe to ask uh, Elham if you would like to give a, a small feedback based on the conversation we had, uh, we had last week on yeah. GBV and, and disability. Yeah, uh, in general, adopting an intersectional approach is, uh, has always been our priority. And uh, I think what we hear as of uh, framing our priorities for next year would be paying more attention to challenges that women with disabilities uh, face. Uh, this is, of mm -hmm. course, very important. Last week, we had a, um, on the occasion of the 16-day campaign uh, on gender-based violence, we had a very interesting webinar on gender-based violence against uh, uh, persons with disabilities who are forcibly displaced. So um, that's the, the start of the conversation. We heard about the different activities that the gender-based uh, violence unit is doing in UNHCR. So to answer your question, Armel, I think, um, I mean, bre breaking the silos between disability groups and women groups is so important. So we have women-led uh, organizations, women-led refugee organizations. Um, I think one measure that we can take, and I, I do recommend to all of you on the ground as well, and we at the international level, is to approach to women-led uh, organizations, especially women-led refugee organizations, because um, they, um, already are doing some activities about supporting refugee women, and uh, we can advocate for ask that those measures are being inclusive and accessible to women with disabilities. At the same time, um, 
many uh, activities about disability uh, may not be uh, gender sensitive enough. So that's another thing that we must do to um, do approach to uh, um, OPDs or also projects to support refugees with disabilities to be more uh, gender sensitive. In terms of the technical support, I think approaching the uh, UNACR country office, which definitely has some gender programs, um, maybe um, that would, the, the answer would be the triangle of um, women organizations, disability organizations, and UNACR uh, national offices to this problem. But from our side, um, we will continue, and we just uh, we are going to meet with a gender-based violence team in UNHCR, and we will continue to work on a um, on a action plan or some priorities to make sure that the gender-based violence uh, activities uh, are inclusive of women with disabilities. Uh, we are also participating in the Age, Gender, and uh, Diversity Group of Friends, who is helping for the to prepare for the Global Refugee Forum. And uh, one of the priorities of the group is actually gender-based violence. And uh, uh, we have been advocating for this to be inclusive of women with disabilities. So um, I think there are things that we are planning to do. Of course, much more needs to be done. In terms of access to financial resources, I think it's great to, um, um, to approach donors about that. And in any proposal uh, submission, uh, making sure that the uh, experience of women with disabilities who are forcibly displaced is included in the financial planning from our side. That's what we can do. But we will continue to do this advocacy. Thank you for raising this important issue. Ricardo, do you want to add anything? Thank you, Alham. And this is Ricardo. I would like to know if, uh, Armel, if the research that you mentioned is available online or if you could share it via email because we could amplify its reach as well, disseminate it, then we could share it, share it as well with our country office uh, and pass the message that you have shared uh, at least to, to for them to have an opportunity to see if there's an opportunity for capacity building opportunities, technical support, or financial as well uh, engagement. Uh, so this is something that we can do. In terms of the Global Refugee Forum, as Elham mentioned, if this is an interesting point, there could be a pledge shaped about it. So writing a, a commitment and doing it in coordination with a member state who would be interested in, in acting as a sponsor or a, an international organization, including as well, we could discuss with with uh, NGOs. So I see that you said this available. If you can share the link, that would be interesting. We can as well follow up bilaterally. Okay, so these are just uh, some ideas, but very, very interesting. And then I wanted to share as well, yes, one of our priorities for next year is to um, run and document accessibility and safety audits across programs, including as well GVV programs. So uh, we can monitor what are the barriers that uh, women and girls with disabilities may be facing in accessing those programs or information on those programs and, and looking for it. I, you mentioned as well employment, which is another of the areas around integration, uh, inclusion, social protection that is very, very relevant. Um, I will give the floor now. Uh, I, I saw Caroline as well, I think Caroline. Uh, so I will, I will give an opportunity as well to unmute. If you would like to, to share with us, please go ahead. I saw that you are muted, but I don't know if your audio is connected. We are giving the floor to Caroline. 
Yes. Oh, okay. I think she's a sign language user. Okay. W would you, Caroline, uh, let me, we can, um, Alexandra, can you, can you uh, yeah. Yeah, allow the camera to be used? So our sign language interpreters can, can interpret for us. Sorry, just, just a second. All right, no problem, take your time. In the meanwhile, colleagues who don't, uh, who feel uh, they have questions, please put them in the chat or in the Q&A part as well. Share your priorities for next year. This is Ricardo speaking. There is another question from uh, Dula Surem Chichik on how the Global Refugee Forum address the lack of knowledge on humanitarian issues faced by persons with disabilities among other uh, stakeholders. Okay, so that's what uh, made the International Disability Alliance make the pledge four years ago, right? Um, to um, work to enhance the knowledge or expertise it's among super. persons with disabilities on humanitarian and the other way among uh, humanitarians on disability. And that's uh, exactly why we are here right now. Uh, and we continue to do this work in a nutshell, but we'll come back to it. I think the interpretation is working. have sent uh, so at home we had a, a uh, message from Caroline um, uh -huh. uh, clarifying that she's a deaf person and impossible to explain it via sign language interpreter so maybe if Caroline uh, if uh, possible we can use international sign if not if you would like to write your points in the chat we can as well in the q a we can as well read them yeah we have international sign interpreter but uh, i don't know if you are comfortable caroline with that No. Should should I give the floor? This is Ricardo to Dula Surem Jit. If you would like to share, further. Duya, it's Duya as well. Duya, yeah, she's also using sign language. Yes, but, Duya. Yeah. Um, so can we have Alexandra? Can we have Duya or Dula Surem um, using her video, please? No, I think it is can open via quest via video, so maybe I can send via email from my questions. So this is Caroline. Uh, so maybe yes, there's no permission to open video. So I don't know, Alexandra, if it's possible to open Caroline's video. And for Duya as well, Dula, Dula Suren. And there was ham I'm sharing in the meantime, there's as well another message from Morocco, Abdul Hadi Bujar, 
and um, about employment that they would require technical and financial help to make professional study around Morocco in order to make pressure to governments and apply rights from the president of the union uh, of persons with disabilities. I will take a note for that as well. Employment has been as well one of the points shared in the in the questionnaire uh, with equal access to employment. Maybe I can give a, a little readout of an analysis that I did while other people would like to raise their hands. So I made four big areas. One is equal access to services. And here we have, um, we include social protection, as we mentioned, um, promoting national social protection strategies and access for refugees with disabilities or state-based persons. Um, working as well on uh, poverty reduction through inclusive education and access to employment. So those are again um, more of national systems uh, strengthening to be able to absorb as well to integrate refugees with disabilities. They are including as well more advanced rights in terms of political rights, enforcement of laws uh, for persons with disabilities, and uh, freedom of movement as well. Then there was a second big area that was more of immediate protection needs, and those included domestic violence, homelessness, so people with disabilities who may be refugees or living on the move and not having access to, to a decent uh, living conditions. Then well-being for persons with disabilities, again, by eradicating gender-based violence, gender equality, and a sub-area on um, marginalized groups within persons with disabilities, including indigenous persons with disabilities and uh, deaf, uh, co the deaf community as well with a request on creating a team uh, of refugee, uh, deaf refugees, which is a very specific uh, idea. And then uh, there's a third area that is disability and the UNHCR's mandate in terms of uh, issues with review of cases, documenting measures, negative measures or negative use of measures. And I think this is in relation with what Michael shared, changing the policy of UNHCR uh, asylum systems to, to make it work better. Um, and engaging persons with disabilities in that change. And here we go to the fourth area that I trying to put a little bit of order, try to call a strengthening of organizations of persons with disabilities. And there were requests about capacity building for persons with disabilities, sensitization at grassroots level, establishing agencies or strengthening programs for persons with disabilities within those agencies. Um, again, capacity building for organizations and giving OPDs as well the opportunity to implement projects. So not only um, raising capacity, et cetera, but as well the opportunity to become implementing partners. So these were some of the additional ideas. Um, uh, and yes, and I see now Tuya highlighting that she could use the, the chat. So um, this is more or less a summary of what we have received 
online. I would like to check if anyone else in the hall would like to add any additional point that is not reflected in those four main areas and or details as well on how to, to make those uh, more tangible as well as, as areas of work. Over to you again. And I see Michael again raising his hand. Would you like to compliment? Michael, we have still time. Yeah, thank you. I need to I need to to insist about uh, documentation because it has become very robust to us. You know, it's not me only, but also most of people are complaining about documentation. Like uh, I renewed my card since 2021, November. Up to now, I haven't yet get my, my ID, you see? And the ID is everything here. Mm? We can't do anything without ID. Even the, this network uh, we are using, we are using line. So it has become like, we are forgotten in the community. But unfortunately, even receiving some money, though it's just getting money and going, but if you don't have that ID, you cannot get that access of receiving money through M-Pesa. You see, that's why I would like to, to insist about documentation they are making us very vulnerable in that way. Yeah. So please, I would Thank like you. to, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that first, Michael, and, and I will pass this message as well. But I would like to uh, as well add as an additional question is um, there is a, process that, or, or a tendency that I have seen within UNHRS and is digitalization. There, there is more digital processes. There is as well processes in relation to what uh, we discussed before on uh, adjustments to ensure access, remote access, that is remote actually registration. I don't know your, I would like to hear your opinion as well. Would those be positive measures uh, or measures? Is our digital barriers part of the problem that, that you may be facing? Or is there any other type of reason for that that you may have within, within your knowledge? Yeah, I don't know what is going on, but I, I, I followed all the process about digitization and whatever, and I have mandate from here, which has already expired. I followed every step which they commanded me to do, and I did it, but still they cannot even see my, uh, my, my, my card on the system. They cannot see, even I went to the uh, headquarters. They told me, you go back. When he came back, they sent me go back there. Just going coming going coming without any result and i don't know now where is my case until now thank you michael and again sorry for 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 this is is uh, it's hard to hear the the question would be as well more transparency in into into the processes 
which is which is very challenging on the other hand but it, it is something that i think has to pass as well as a message in terms of what are the next steps and how is a process uh, or a case being managed so i take note of this I, I would like to see as well that I see other two mentions. So Armel uh, mentioned as well capacity building on administrative functions uh, should also be given to OPTs. And I guess this would be um, administration or, or structural uh, capacity. And, I, and maybe I would like to ask here Elham to come in on, on support for OPTs in this. And in the meantime, I, I will be as well uh, reading from uh, the Philippines, another colleague. Elham, would you like to, to come maybe on, on bridge and, and other type of supports or ideas in terms of strengthening more the structural capacity, organizational capacity of, of OPDs? Not sure if we may, we may have lost Elham. Sorry, now I realize. Okay, I will I will read in the meantime the the second uh, the second point from Al Rashid Kassani. Thank you, and it's a, a, a recognition of this opportunity to to exchange in, in advocacy and, and a discussion and an openness to to collaborate in the Philippines. So very very interesting, and absolutely it would be interesting if you would like Al Rashid as well to share what are some of the of the um, priorities that you have for next year and and how we could align our efforts. And another comment I'm reading from Bujar as well uh, on women with disabilities and skills for, for access to employment. But this is another area that has been mentioned um, and digitalization as well. Uh, so digit it is a, a problem that, that we have been seeing in the last years the progressive digitalization of employment but as well processes in to access uh, asylum procedures etc being positive on one hand because they allow for remote access but negative because they may pose new barriers uh, digital barriers for people with less access to technology etc so that is another other point. But uh, please, Al Rashid Kassani, if you would like to, to share additional points on your work in the Philippines, it may be interesting as well to hear. You can raise your hand if you would like to speak and and we can give you the possibility to unmute. Okay. Sorry, I will give you. Oops. So I think you can unmute now, Rasid, Kassad, or tell us if you would like to use video rather.
Yes, can, can you hear me? Yes, uh, yes, uh, uh, you can you can use the, the chat box if if the uh, connection is not is not good. Please go ahead. So in the meantime, um, if anyone else would like to, to share, please use, as well I see some of the fellows, uh, the International Disability Alliance fellows, with whom we've had webinars. If you would like to as well share from all this year, what have been your, your experience, your lessons learned, and if there's anything else that you would like to see for, for next year to, to add it to the discussion, please go ahead. You can, again, raise your hand and we will allow you to, to unmute. Sorry, it's a little bit slow, the process. Okay, so I I see Maud. Maud, would you like to share? I gave you. Now, that's it. Yes, now can please. Yes, go ahead. I think now is clear. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Maud Lewis. I work as a DRG fellow for International Disability Alliance. Actually, I have two major areas that I just want to uh, make a comment. Um, actually, when it comes to issue of refugees and access to, um, uh, to refugee and asylum processes for persons with disabilities, I think this is exactly, this is really a vital area particularly for uh, people with intellectual and mental disability who might in most of the times find challenges in expressing the challenges the changes facing them and this will take us to the point of providing reasonable accommodation in its entirety accessible for care that i felt is vital and for us to take into consideration the second point is the fact is the is our focus here, and here in South Sudan we have a conflict-related sexual violence, which is also a concept that is being taken into consideration now. So I was also thinking I was also of the opinion that we need to take into consideration um, uh, the aspect of conflict-related sexual violence with regard to persons with disabilities, because now we might see the uh, impact in the greater picture. But I feel that it is also more vital for us to focus on the aspect of disability and how it intersects with, uh, with issues like gender, conflict, situation, and so forth. So I feel these are uh, vital areas that we really need to take into consideration. And then when it comes to uh, organizations of persons with disabilities in the global forum, I, in, the, in, in the global context, I think the aspect of uh, climate change is remains also a vital area and i actually heard of some progresses being made in that particular area through international disability alliance so i think it is also a vital area that we also need to take into consideration for us to take into consideration is how to make sure that the, the kind of trainings that we have at the global level uh, the, the, that are that are happening through collaboration between UNHCR and International Disability Alliance are also uh, translated to our to our branches in the ground on the ground, like UNHCR at the national level, OPDs at the national level, and how this concept actually can be made more active at the national level because I think that is where 
most impact can be made, although at the global level is a place where most decisions can be made. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maud. And thank you for raising that, that point on capacity building. We, we provide some opportunities at the global level for trainings online or uh, in person, but gathering few people only because it's challenging to mobilize um, many people, but the opportunity of having those at national level is very, very important. And as you mentioned, this has to come as well from our national colleagues. And and this is where I would like to, to ask as well for you, we, we can to pressure from bro both sides, right? Uh, sharing those uh, requests at national level um, can help us then to, to come with support for next year. We are planning at least two, if not four, uh, different opportunities for, for training at national level. So that, that is an opportunity that we can leverage. And um, as well, uh, gender-based violence as a, as, a, as a weapon in armed conflict is an area where the Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities has been working as well and where we can, we can find as well opportunities to, to strengthen intersectionality as, as uh, was, was sharing. Thank you, Maud. I see as well that Armel had again her hand raised. I don't know, Armel, if you would like to go ahead. You can, you can now unmute, I yeah, think. Yeah, thank you. Thank yes, you once please. more. I really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, this actually, just few months that I've, I've been involved in the activities uh, under IDA, and it's actually a learning process to me, uh -huh. which is really helping to, to develop and to improve our organization. And just to add into it, I will really, really appreciate, just like uh, the last speaker said, to if there are opportunities for us to be part of the learning process, be it online, I would really appreciate it so that it can also help us strengthen our capacity. And also I would love to, to be added in the mailing list so for any online uh, sessions so that I can take part, which would also help us to, to strengthen the, the network of persons with disabilities in the in the country as a whole i will really really be grateful and in the, in the area of capacity and, uh, building especially the learning situations i will appreciate very much Thank you. Your connection was breaking up a little bit. This is Ricardo speaking again. Um, but I took notes on, um, yes, uh, being interested both in, in national level, but as well online learning opportunities. And next week, uh, next week, sorry, next year, we will do as well uh, global uh, cohorts or trainings on our packages. Uh, on, on um, strengthening protection for persons with disabilities. So I took note as well on adding to the mailing list for training um, opportunities. And this is something that we could do with who registered in the, in the webinar. So thank you, thank you so much. And I will read now, I see as well. Um, so uh, Arwashid uh, mentioned as well in the chat, uh, priorities that would include promoting activities to uh, socialize or popularize or socialize disability rights through community consultations, dialogue and radio programs. The second one would be a pilot project to include, include persons with disabilities into local legislation in a Bangsa Moro government. Okay, so that would be a particular region. 
and then a research work to locate persons with disabilities, types of disabilities, and government services to address their needs. So I'm going to take a note of this and include as well into, into our compilation of points. Um, what is interesting as well is, uh, yes, there would be many opportunities for community-based protection approaches, which is a, an area that we are working as well um, as part of our, where, where we are located in the UN Refugee Agency. And um, this need to identify both persons with disabilities we have included the Washington group in our registration module. So that includes opportunities for mapping, identifying persons with disabilities and needs. But it is important as well to map out organizations of persons with disabilities. And in particular, in particular those who are led by refugees with disabilities, as some of you represent. So. If, if you didn't um, share yet the contact details or the background of your organization, please do so, because for next year, we will be mapping and, and let's say engaging those who have more of a refugee, either interest or background representative capacity for uh, or persons with disabilities into the GRF, so please share with us, okay? Thank you, thank you so much. And we are coming into the last minutes of our webinar today, so I don't know if there are any pending points. Anyone wanted to take the opportunity to share? Remember, you can do it in Spanish, in French, in Arabic. Feel free to share ideas, this is, this is the moment. Okay, Julius, I see your hand raised. Okay, would you like to come back? Yeah, yeah, just Go, coming back, please. saying that uh, <clears throat> if um, if there is a preference or an opportunity to give preference to physical meeting, it would be good because uh, some, some of us, are, it's not easy being online during pandemic and now, you know, we've been um, really online a lot and uh, sometimes it's just good to really meet with the people and uh, get to reflect together and sometimes that things that can come up that cannot really be online but uh, if uh, we all know the challenges with uh, meaningful participation in a physical meeting this is if it's a possibility yeah. thank you and absolutely agreed on on that this is uh, as well for training opportunities um i think there has been a lot of online webinars, etc. But we all recognize how important it is to meet in person. And uh, there has been this year, we had a training in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where we had an opportunity to meet in person with uh, UNHCR staff and organizations of persons with disabilities and have an training opportunities together. The same happened in the Middle East and Northern Africa region where we had around 14 operations come in and as well some organizations of persons with disabilities and trainers with disabilities from the International Disability Alliance joining. And I think it is a unique opportunity. The, the digital world cannot substitute our in-face uh, or in-person meetings and learning opportunities. For next year, we want to support at least, as I said, two to, to four trainings. So if your countries have interest, we can coordinate and try to make it happen. 
and we will be hosting as well, uh, helping um, a delegation of refugees with disabilities to, to participate in person into the Global Refugee Forum. So if you would be interested as well, there's opportunities. We will have to select, of course, and to see in the discussions who could be participating and how it would be possible, but it, there is an opportunity as well that we will leverage there, okay? So with this, I will give one additional minute if anyone would like to share anything else. And there is an, a, a request as well for a WhatsApp group. So I think this is a good opportunity for um, colleagues in the uh, fellow program. So Rose, for example, um, I understand that Bujar would be from Morocco. So the, the French uh, group would be interesting. I will, I think Bujar uh, left his contacts and I will copy those. So we can include him, and this is just for information as well. There is a um, a group of organizations of persons with disabilities who uh, have been receiving training and uh, through through the International Disability Alliance, where there is an opportunity to ask to be in a WhatsApp group as well to share opportunities requests etc so of course i think it would be a very important good opportunity to include uh, Bujar if he is not already part of this group and armel as well i see Taking note. Great. Okay, so I think with this we can close the the webinar. There's been opportunities, unless anyone would like again to share. Um there has been uh Opportunities, yes, and, and no worries, Michael, well noted. Um, there's no mistakes <laughs> here. We, we just share with what we consider is relevant. So I think with this, we are going to close the webinar. Thank you, everyone. Elham, I don't know if you would like to yeah. share as well, please. Sure, uh, thank you very much, everybody. So we have a lot coming in 2023. Um, there would be the Global Refugee Forum and we talked quite a bit about pledges, but we will definitely meet there. So stay tuned for our meetings next year. There would be meetings about uh, how to make a pledge, what is a good pledge, how you can advocate to get a, a strong pledge. And we hope uh, to use this pledging mechanism as an important tool to address many of the priorities that uh, have been shared, many of the concerns, many of the challenges that have been shared. In the meanwhile, we invite you to look into the pledges from the uh, before Global Refugee Forum and uh, look at them and try to prepare yourself and think about it at what pledge would address the ba barriers and the problems that you were just sharing. Because I think that's something that we have and we can use a lot next year. Thank you, Elham. So as well as closing, we will transform all these points and the activities that we have um, undertaken this year, the, the collaboration into a report. Uh, our colleague Edris already shared a link to our uh, website with the International Disability Alliance where we had uh, the, we have the report for 2021, outlining priorities for 2022 as well. So then you will be able to use them as well as a reference for, to, to disseminate, to share as well, uh, and as well coming back 
for us, I mean, to us with feedback in case we didn't capture everything that you wanted to, to share. Okay, we will do, of course, aggregated inputs. We will not mention specifically anyone as well for, for just protection. Uh, but at least we will we will try to capture all this and ensure that next year we have some opportunities within the uh, planned activities to give room for those for this uh, situation shed. okay thank you so much again thanks for uh, organizing this to the international disability alliance all the interpreters sign language interpreters french arabic spanish and to the IDA existing team. It has been really good to work with you this year and we look forward to working with you next year. Yes, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.